You know, the Quran is a book of guide. It's a guide book. You know, suppose if you are studying, the guide book is normally at a shelf which is reachable. You know, it's kept at a shelf which you can re reach the easiest. You won't keep it on top where difficult it will take a stool to get it down. So Quran is a book we should be referred every day. It should be handy. And many of us Muslims, you know, we tie the Quran in a pure silk cloth. And then we tie a knot on it. Suppose if you want to read the Quran, you start thinking, okay, five minutes to open the Quran. Five minutes again to tie the Quran, ten minutes. The thought of you opening the Quran and again tying it will be a deterrent. And if you have ten minutes, Dust minute have you khol name or banne me jayenge. If you have 10 minutes time, you know, to open the Quran, close 10 minutes, so better not eat the Quran. See, we have to respect the Quran, but the main respect is in the heart. I'm not against keeping the Quran on top, don't get me wrong. But see to it that it is accessible. It's easily available for guidance. You know, many of us Muslims, before touching the Quran, we scrutinize a thousand things as though it's an RDX bomb. Quran, wearing shoes, can I touch the Quran? Can I read the Quran while standing? Can I read it in the office? All these things, they prevent you from reading the Quran. We scrutinize the Quran as though it's an RDX bomb going to explode. The Quran is a book of guidance. So that's the reason many of us Indians object to, you know, the Arabs, mashallah, the way they, they treat the Quran, they give respect. But as though it's a guide, it's available. We Muslims keep it on top of shelf, you know, in India. It's catching dust. And rarely will we find people, when they have five minutes, ten minutes, they refer to the Quran. Because there is, you know, we have to have that frame of mind, and then we have to see ten things, we can't be in shoes, we can't stand and we have to have a hat over your head, etc, etc. See, many things are good, but don't make life so difficult that the main purpose of the Quran is for guidance is defeated. And very often if you go to the Gulf countries, you know, many of the Arabs when they come for Salah a few minutes before, you find them taking the Quran and reading. In India, rarely will you find that. And suppose someone is reading in the first row, and someone takes the Quran and reads in the second row, there will be a person who will object. How can you read the Quran in the second row? The back is facing the Quran. Haram. Halas. And if you have to sit in the mosque, and suppose at your home or in the mosque, if by mistake you have, if you happen to read the Quran while facing Qibla, halas, you will get fatwa, haram. You know, you can't read the Quran with your back face in the Qibla, back face in the Kaaba. I've been to Haram several times in Makkah, several times, you know. They have this Talim quran they have the Hibs classes, you know. And, and, they have, and the students sit in rows. Many of the back face the Quran of the other student who's carrying a Quran in the hand. And many a time the teacher is facing the Kaaba and the students back are facing the Kaaba. So where do they get this from, which verse of the Qur'an, which hadith, I don't know. So we have to love the Qur'an, we have to respect, but we have to know that the main reason the Qur'an was revealed was for hidayah, was for guidance. Once there was an Indian Imam, very good Kari, he went to Saudi Arabia. And because he was famous, it was Maghrib's time, so they told the Qari, they told the Imam, Imam, you, risk, you lead the Salah. So the Indian Imam, he goes and he leads the Salah from Maghrib. He decides and he finishes the Salah. And when he finishes, when he finishes the Salah, one Saudi smiles at him. So then he asks that, what's the problem? Was there any problem in my kirat? So the Saudi told him, No, your kirat was wonderful. I was only wondering that when you recited Surah Yusuf, why did you put Yusuf salam in the well, but before you complete the salah, why didn't you get him out of the well?
this anecdote would be understood only by those people who read the Quran with understanding. Those who don't read the Quran with understanding will not be able to understand this anecdote. The Saudi was telling him, if you read Surah Yusuf, it speaks about the story of Israel Islam, that how he was betrayed by his brother, and his brothers put him in the well, and later on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caravan comes, and Yusuf al has got out of the well. So the Saudi tells him that you recited very well, but in your salah you put Yusuf al in the well, but at least before ending the salah you should have brought him out of the well. That means we start the surah from anywhere, and we end it anywhere without realizing have we completed the meaning or not. We Muslims, we have several excuses for not reading the Quran with understanding. And we always give excuses for not reading. We have the time to read books, volumes, memorize them, but the glorious Quran which is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, we don't take out time to read the message of our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Muhammad, chapter number 47, verse number 24, Allah says, Afala yadadabburun al Quran. Do they not ponder over the Quran? Or are their hearts locked up? Allah is saying that don't you ponder over the verse of the Quran or are your hearts locked up? Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 159, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He makes the signs clear, after it has been revealed to you and made the guidance clear and if you conceal them Allah's curse is on you Allah says those who conceal the signs after it's made clear to you and the guidance after it is given to you Allah's curse is on such people Allah says in Surah Furqan chapter number 25 verse number 30 Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he says that these are my people who took the Quran for foolish nonsense. Imagine the beloved Prophet Muhammad saying that these are my people who took the Quran for foolish nonsense. But naturally the context of the verse is talking about Munaf, uh, Munafik, Utbah. But unfortunately today we have Muslims who yet take the Quran for foolish nonsense. No, Allah. The Quran was revealed as the guidance for the whole of humanity. And when we read the Quran, there are two types of reading. One is called as Tazakkur-e-Quran, and the other is Tadabbur-e-Quran. 